Redfall I remember. Ever forward! No one is coming to help you. In the world of gaming, there is nothing quite as exciting as the release of a brand new AAA title. The hype builds for months, we pre-order our copies, and everybody eagerly awaits the moment we can finally dive into the latest and greatest from our favorite developers. And then, the game is released, and we get this. It seems like every year game developers are in a race to release their games, but forget one crucial thing. Making sure the game actually works. That's like they're saying, that's fine, we'll just give it a day one patch, that'll solve everything. No, how about you stop that and give us the real game? It just feels like we're playing a game of Russian roulette with our wallets, hoping the next big release won't be a complete disaster. But unfortunately, we just keep getting burned time and time again. See, back in the day, we used to get games like Crash Bandicoot, Donkey Kong, or Rayman. They were simple, yet challenging, and kept us entertained for hours on end. But the most important part, the games actually worked. It was a simpler time before loot boxes and microtransactions, when you could buy a game and actually get the full experience. Where developers promised you this, and that is exactly what you got. Without needing a hundred patches and having to wait six months after release to get something somewhat playable. Yeah, different time. This has become the new norm. So fast forward to today, and we're left with games that are sometimes so broken they make the original E.T. for Atari look like a masterpiece. Redfall? More like Deadfall. Jedi Survivor? More like Jedi Wish I'd Never Played This Game. So let's just take a quick look at Cyberpunk 2077. Now this is old news, but it's still important that we talk about this. This game was hyped up to the moon and back, promising a rich and immersive open world experience. And what did we get at launch? A buggy mess that sometimes made my eyes bleed. It was like playing a game of Find the Glitch instead of actually enjoying the game. Okay, I will say that the glitches were actually pretty hilarious though. It was funny, just not $70 funny. If this was a free game, hey, no complaints here. In the case of Redfall, you think you're going to get a cool vampire-filled story, but instead get a slideshow of images. Yeah, if I wanted that, I'll just pop open After Effects and save the $70, thanks. And don't even get me started on the rest of the game. The AI is about as intelligent as a cardboard box. The side quests, oh man. I mean, who needs a well-polished game with engaging gameplay when you can have whatever this is? But hey, at least we're not paying actual money for this or anything, right? Wait. You know, the worst part about this all is that they must have known the state that this game was in, but they shipped it anyway. And sadly, this is just happening more and more with some of the major releases. So the question is, what exactly happened to the games industry? I don't actually know, I'm not an expert, but if I had to take a guess, I would say, it seems like they've traded in creativity and passion for profit and deadlines. Instead of actually taking the time to create a fully polished game, they're just rushing to meet deadlines and release buggy messes that barely function. It's like they're saying, well, why bother making a good game? We could just make a mediocre one and still make bank. And unfortunately for us, this is pretty accurate. While it is true that games are becoming more and more complex with bigger worlds, more detailed graphics, more intricate gameplay mechanics, I mean, almost every new release is open world now. Pokemon, open world. Zelda, open world. New Animal Crossing game, probably open world. This just means that development times are longer and there are more opportunities for things to go wrong. So what exactly does this mean for the player? It means that we're left with the frustrating task of trying to play a game that is barely functional. We're left with crashes, glitchy graphics, some textures that look like a five-year-old colored it with a crayon. It honestly just feels like we're the ones beta testing the game, but we paid them to do it. It just feels like they don't care about the players anymore and just want to make a quick buck. So what exactly is the solution? Probably the most obvious, and for some people, the last thing that you want to hear. Delay the game. 
A game delay might be about as fun as watching paint dry, but honestly, would you rather have a polished, well-functioning game that meets your expectations, or a buggy mess that's about as stable as a drunken Jenga tower? When you finally get your hands on that shiny new game, the last thing that you want is to encounter game-breaking bugs, crashes, and glitches that make you want to pull your hair out. You're paying good money for an experience. And when that experience is riddled with technical issues, it can leave a sour taste in your mouth. Also send some of you on a Twitter frenzy, but I won't judge. You do you. It's honestly a shame to see a lot of games being released like this, because many of them have great ideas, gameplay, or story, depending on the title that you play. But then they quickly get overpowered by the state it's being released in. This just ruins the experience for a lot of players. Of course, there's always the overly optimistic gamer that somehow doesn't see any of the issues, but that's a whole different thing. And if I'm being honest, I've been there once before. But at this point, it's just getting ridiculous and I've had enough. Overly optimistic? Not anymore. Even if the developers manage to fix the issues and improve the game, the damage has already been done. People will always remember the sad state the game was in when it was released and it will forever be a stain on the game's reputation. And let's not forget about the power of word of mouth. When a game launches in this state, people aren't going to be singing its praises to their friends. No, they're going to be warning them to stay far, far away from this dumpster fire. In the end, all this really does is just hurt the game and the developer's reputation. So with all that in mind, I just think I'll be over here playing my old school Nintendo games, pretending it's the 90s, where everything just works, and life was good.